I'm here today to talk about butterflies. And no, I'm not talking about the colourful winged insects. I'm talking about that fluttering feeling you get in the pit of your stomach when you see the person you like, when you watch a film with Johnny Depp in it, or even when you're just excited or nervous. But why do we get this sensation and what really is it? Although the idea of a kaleidoscope of butterflies flitting around your belly is a wonderful image, it couldn't be anything further from the truth. Your body has something called the Atomic Nervous System, or the ANS for short, and this lets the body look, look after itself without too much thought. It controls many different things, such as regulating blood flow and distributing nutrients around the body, and it can be split into two main branches, the rest and digest, or the more commonly known fight or flight, which is what we're going to be looking at today. But what does fight or flight have to do with butterflies? Well, one of the main roles of this branch, the ANS, is to prepare you for what it thinks might happen. It's an evolutionary advantage that we've had since the first man walked the earth. Picture it, you're back in the Stone Age. If a saber-toothed tiger was about to attack you, you don't want your precious oxygen-filled blood to be preoccupied with digesting that tasty woolly mammoth leg you had for dinner. Instead, lots of the blood gets temporarily redirected from your gut to your muscles. The stomach's sensory nerves then sense the lack of oxygen needed to digest the food and are trying to tell the body that they're not happy with the situation. In fact, any emotions or stress responses that originate in the brain can actually send signals to your gut, which may change gut functions. And your gut is a lot clearer than you think. In fact, any emotions can change gut microbes and how these molecules produce, and how people feel and think is highly connected to how their gut is behaving. And butterflies indicate emotional arousal, whether that be positive or negative, and whether the brain interprets that as a physical threat to safety or anxious excitement on a first date. And another question I guess you tell you're dying to ask is, Camilla, are humans the only beings that can feel butterflies? And the answer is no. Studies show that our furry friends can also feel butterflies. Dogs, like humans, can feel emotions such as anger, love, sadness, and joy. And they too have a highly intelligent gut and a similar way of processing stress responses from the brain. So not only do they chase around the garden, but dogs also feel butterflies in their stomachs. And finally, the name, butterflies, why is it called that? Well, it's described as a fluttering sensation, similar to how a butterfly flutters its wings to fly. And I guess mammoth in your middle doesn't have quite the same ring to it. Fantastic. So now, now we know what we've been feeling before we took to the stage. Um, thank you for that, Camilla. Uh, let's go to our judges. Joe, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, I mean, well done. I've learnt lots from that talk already. I wonder if my cat now experiences butterflies at, um, you know, after that talk. Um, but what inspired you to choose this topic, Camilla? Well, I do like a lot of work like on stage and things like that because I really enjoy like acting and I always get like butterflies before performances and when I was choosing a topic for my speech I was thinking like what's something that I can do because I didn't want to do a topic that I couldn't really relate to and then I thought why don't I do butterflies because it's been something that I've been experiencing for many years and I never really understood why. Mm. Brilliant well I thought it was going to be the things that flutter around plants when you start it so brilliant thank you very much. Thank you Joe and Adam do you want to ask me? Yeah really interesting I I'm I'm wondering if in your research you've come across any of the sort of negative aspects of fight or flight and the sort of modern day stress and all of that kind of stuff in, in, in the mix when you were looking around. Yeah, so um, I didn't really research as much that sort of part of it, but I know that um, fight or flight also um, creates lots of adrenaline and sometimes if that adrenaline is in unhealthy amounts, the brain can interpret that as panic and you can think, have things like panic attacks and that's sometimes when people have that when they're feeling really nervous. Yeah, well, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Judges, thank you, Camilla. You can head back there to your seat now. Thank you.